Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood, and in this video I'm going to show you how to use Lightburn's Center Finder to make some party dice. you can buy at most of your hobby shops uh, online I, I pick these up at a local hobby shop and normally they list for 600 or 600 uh, six dollars and fifty cents and most time they're 30 40 50 percent off so around three to four dollars you can buy a set of or no two pair of die like this uh, we're gonna make some custom fun party dice and you can do this as a, an adult dice or you can do this as chore dice uh, one dice will have a noun the other night dice i have a, a verb so if uh, or if you're doing a chores it can be a chore and a length of time like dishes a week uh, laundry a month uh, so there's all kind of way you ways you can have fun with the dice I'm going to do some Valentine's dice, so it'll be couples party dice, and we're going to keep it uh, PG. We're not going to go X-rated, but you can, but we're not going to do that here. <clears throat> we're not going to do that here on YouTube. So you need to come up with six nouns and six verbs, and let's take a look at what I'm looking at, uh, we're going to play with here. Um, all right, so the words I've come up with, <clears throat> the verbs, kiss, suck, lick, touch, blow, and then wild. And then the nouns, neck, lip, lips, ears, thigh, navel, and wild. So one dice will have one set of six, the other will have the other set of six. <clears throat> but this video is not about the actual project so much as it is how to use your diode how to set up <clears throat> to find that perfect center and make these flawlessly and quickly. So I'm going to move the camera over to the Comgro Z1 and you'll be able to see the up close what's going on with the laser and the screen and we're going to have some fun making some dice. Okay so this is the Comgro Z1 <clears throat> Z1 10 watt diode laser and I have the air assist hooked up to it, but we won't be using it in this job. And I have the uh, laser protection already removed because of the uh, 10 watt. But if you don't, or because of the air assist, but if you don't have your air assist hooked up and this is on the, your laser, you want to slide that off. It's just a little magnetic piece. But you're going to need to have good view of your laser when framing. <clears throat> now, I have already gone through the focusing. So I know that <clears throat> this is the proper level. But I'm going to choose a place to set this dice on my work bed. I'm going to try and center in front of the camera there. It is kind of randomly placed, <clears throat> and I've got a frog in my throat today, guys, and I apologize for all the throat clearing, but we're going to struggle through this. All right, once you've placed that piece randomly on your work bed, you're going to come up to your laser tools center finder. And it asks you to move the laser head to a point on the outside of the circle. And then set the cir first circle point, and then you click move on. We're going to do that. But now, it is important that you do a couple of things. One, home your machine to begin with. So we're going to cancel this. We're going to send the laser to home. And the Comgro Z1 does have limit switches, so... I can count on it being 
in a fixed position every time, unlike some of those lasers out there where they just bounce around off of rails and you never get the same <laughs> position twice. But now that I'm in home position, I'm going to move this laser out to approximately where that dice is located by using the drop pin feature there. That's a pretty good guess. All right, and now I'm going to use, uh, under the move uh, menu, tell it to fire the laser at 1%. And now you can see there that the laser is fired and it is right there on the surface of the dice. But it's not <clears throat> on the perimeter. So we're going to go to our laser tools, center finder, and using the move menu, not physically moving it. You have to use your move menu. We're going to move this and I'm going to, you can change your distances here. I'm going to say uh, a point one, one tenth, and I'm in an inch, inch mode, so that's one tenth of an inch, and I'm going to move, that actually looks pretty good right there. Uh, you're going to want to put that right on the outer perimeter of the circle, and say set first circle point. Now it's telling you to move laser head to a new point on the outside of the circle. Separation helps accuracy. So the further away you are from each point, the better off you are. Now I'm going to increase my distance to uh, point two, just so it can move there faster. Move it down. And that went too far. So now I'm going to take it back to a point one, or yeah, point one. Move it back up. That went a little too far, so I'm going to do 0.05. And move her down. And 0.025. And I like that. So set second circle point. Move laser head to a third point on the outside of the circle. Separation helps accuracy. So we're going to take this back up to a 0.1. Point oh two five and bring her back in. And that's gonna work. It's that third circle point. Okay, now it says it's computed position and it gives you the X and Y. And you can tell it to jog to the circle center and add guide to circle project. Now I like to do that. And go ahead, you can tell it to jog to the center. And there you see she's right in the center of that dice. And I've already selected Add Guide to Circle Project. Say OK. And that put a toolpath on your work bed of where that circle is. And currently, the laser is positioned right there in the center. Now I'm going to just take each of one of my words, one at a time. Select. And, and actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, before I do that, I'm going to select that toolpath, go to my range menu, and lock selected shapes. Now, that's locked that toolpath to the work bed, and I cannot accidentally budge that. <clears throat> and now I'm also going to do one thing. I'm going to take a square, a carpenter square, and what I'm going to do first... <laughs> I'm going to move, select, and I'm going to move the laser head out of the way, and just press this down and hold it in position, and take a carpenter square, and that's too long that way, so we'll flip it, it's going to work for me this way, we'll make it work.
Alright. So, push that into place. <clears throat> and it's just going to serve as a guide for <clears throat> placement as we rotate the dice. We're going to have to tweak it, but that's just going to help us tweak it very minimal. Alright. Now, select a word. Select our toolpath, center it up, and we're going to do a rubber band frame. Oh, and I see my my electrical cables have hit the square, so that's not going to work in that position. Check that again. Frame. And you see that laser runs right around the perimeter of that one perfectly. She is ready to engrave. I'm going to check my cuts and layers. Good. All right. And see in. And I want to get a good dark image on here, so I'm using 60 millimeters a second and 80% power and doing a cross hatch and then doing a line after fill to give it some definition. And I'm doing the cross hatch because we're going to be engraving this on with the grain and cross grains and, and all kinds of different angles because of the way the dice is designed. So by doing it in that cross hatch, I'm giving it, you know, a good engraving regardless which way that grain's running so it's going to probably not probably it should come out more uniform this way all right so that's done i can Set Kiss out of the way. Grab my next one. Centered up. Now I'll take my dice. <clears throat> Holding that square firmly in place. You rotate that dice. Put it back down. Now we'll do another rubber band frame. And see how close she is. Now because the dice themselves have some irregularities it's going to be close that actually is perfect so we can just hit start and while it's doing its job we're going to move that one out of the way grab the next one center it up I just moved my slide, but that's okay. Because we're going to do another rubber band frame each time. <clears throat> and 
and that's still good enough. Start. Because the one good thing about this, especially these, and I'm going to be, these I'm doing up for Valentine's Day. If someone is playing with these die, and they're concerned because the word lick is off center by a fraction while they're playing this game, well, they don't have their mind in the right spot. And th this is something that should never be noticed when these dice are out being played with. And let's get ready for our next one. Now this, <clears throat> this is the new dice, so that frame or that you know, may or may not work because if there was a difference in machine used on its initial sanding, it could be a difference in size. But that's close enough that if it's off a little bit, whoever's playing with them, I won't be able to see that from my house. So that'll work. And with just a little bit of sanding and a light coat of clear, nice finished product that's going to hold up for a while and be protected from any kind of stains. We won't talk about what kind of stains, but some light clear on there to help protect those. It'll be fun to play with, especially if there's any libations in, in, involved. So uh, hope you enjoyed this. Um, the technique itself is what it was about, not so much about the project. If you're interested in, in these dice, I'll have a link in the description below and the show more. Uh, you won't have to leave your house. You can just click on the button, buy you some dice, and practice on using Center Finder. Uh, hopefully this was informative. I, I enjoy making these videos. I really appreciate my, the support from my patrons on Patreon. Uh, that should be there as well. Patreon.com at or Patreon.com slash Hobo with Wood. Don't forget about the other channel, uh, YouTube.com at Lasermakers Realm for free files. And until the next video, I'm Steve, Hobo with Wood, and I'm out. <laughs>